Zipix is one of the smartest and most reliable Counter-Strike players, often playing a more supportive role in the beginning of the round, to then end up in the prime position to be the main clutcher for his team. Let's have a look at the nades he uses most often to set his team up for success on overpass. This video will cover 12 different nades, most of them being towards the B side since this is where Zipix is most often playing for his team, both on the T and the CT side of the map. Without further ado, let's have a look at his most used Molotov lineup when playing as an attacker. In the beginning of the round, Zipix uses this Molotov that is thrown from Ali and lands in short. I've picked a single match against Evil Geniuses to showcase the frequency of this nade being used by Zipix. As you can see in the clips, he uses this Molotov for short in almost every single round that he can afford to buy it. Now, this is done to condition his opponents. For their perspective, it is very difficult to read Astralis' setup. This short Molotov comes in almost every round, so that leaves the defenders only two options. Either they invest utility towards B short to counter any aggressive pushes and take control of one of the most important parts of the map, or they give up control and don't contest this area. So in both situations this Molotov has an effect. It either forces the defenders to use some of their utility, or it denies the defenders information about short and hence denies the map control. So for the lineup, Zipix, when running from spawn, comes to the edge of the shadow on the floor. He stands still and aims at the bottom of this B as shown on screen. A simple jump throw and the Molotov flies over the walls and lands in the middle of the short corridor. Another different lineup he sometimes uses for a similar Molotov with the same landing position as this one. He comes over to the wall, aims up as shown, and releases with a left click throw while running. The placement of the Molotov is nearly identical to the lineup shown before, however this one can be thrown a bit earlier in the round and also doesn't require him to stop moving. This could be perfect for a fast short rush where every split second can make a difference. So now that we've seen two handy lineups for Molotoving short, let's have a look at a high explosive nade that could be a potential follow up for this Molotov. Remember we said that this Molotov could force the defenders to give up short control? Well, some teams will still try to get as much information as they can about short by jump spotting or even boosting at the sandbag's position. Astralis is always aware of this possibility and have a nice counter stack of nades that they like to use once or twice in a match to try and nuke one of the B defenders. For the lineup, come over to this barrel below the tracks. Get into the corner created by the barrel and what seems to be some sort of a washing machine. Put your crosser at the end of this third horizontal bar and then all the way to the left so that it intersects with the arch of the tunnel. Run one or two steps and release with a jump throw. This way the nade directly explodes in the face of anyone at the boost of the sandbags. Be careful however because this movement exposes you shortly to anyone peeking deep through the tunnel of monster. The fourth nade of the video is a smoke for the bridge at B and it is thrown from the same area as the previous high explosive nade. The smoke lands in the middle of the bridge and gives the attackers that are coming from both short and monster some cover so that they don't have to worry about anyone holding either the CT or ABC angle. Be careful however, since this smoke will leave a small gap between the wooden planks, which could be used by a sneaky defender in the water to try and get a frag on you or one of your teammates. For the lineup, come over to this corner next to the monster tunnel, aim up and above this concrete beam as shown on screen. Release with a left click throw and the smoke will arc high and land in the middle of the bridge after a few bounces. The B side of overpass only has two narrow choke points that attackers can come from during an execute. Therefore, throwing well placed flashbangs is a key factor for success when trying to enter the bomb site. Let's have a look at two different flashbangs that Zipix most commonly uses when Astralis decides to go for a B push. The first one is a supportive flashbang for his teammates that come up through short. It is thrown from the tracks position and it pops above the small building next to the bridge of B. First of all, this flashbang works well because it flashes many angles, including ABC, CT, water, and even to some extent this off angle towards monster. The second reason why this flash works well is because its positioning allows for teammates to come up through short without getting blinded from the flash itself. The line above this flashbang doesn't have to be very precise, just come over to the edge of the shadow created by the tracks, then aim up above the left side of this brick, 
Then do a few steps and release with a left click draw. The second flashbang that Zipix likes to use during B executes is this one. This flashbang pops quite high and in front of the pillar at sight. This gives it a high chance of flashing most of the B defenders, especially ABC, CT, Water and even Heaven. At the same time, due to its efficient placement, it also allows his teammates to push up through the monster tunnel and not worry too much about getting flashed, due to the fact that this flashbang will be behind the pillar for their line of sight. The lineup, once again, doesn't have to be perfect. Just come over to these stairs and aim up slightly left of this square block in the bridge. Run a bit and release with a left click throw. As most of us already know, Astralis is a very structured team with a deep strat book that allows them to mix things up to keep their opponents guessing. However, even the greatest team in the game still has a few strategies they like so much that they run them at least once in every match. The following smoke towards the ABC angle, thrown by Zipix, is part of one of those strategies. This strategy uses a smoke wall blocking of ABC and CT combined with a heaven and side smoke to narrow down the defender's possibilities. I won't go too in depth about this strategy itself, for now let's stick to Zipix smoke that lands at ABC. The lineup is fairly easy, come over to the middle of the pallet in alley and put your crosser at the end of this dark line. Jump throw and the smoke will land at the ABC angle after bouncing against the wall. Because the smoke can be thrown all the way from alley, it lands rather quickly and allows Astralis to do a very fast B execute that gives them the chance to switch up the pace of the game. Since Zipix is the main B player for Astralis during their matches on overpass, you'll see him often holding for any aggressive pushes from the CTs in this alley area. However, sometimes when his team wants to do a fast push that gives them control of connector, mid and even toilets, he can assist his teammates remotely by throwing this interesting supportive smoke that lands a divider. By the time the smoke has landed, his three teammates have taken control of connector and are now ready to enter middle. By this time, Zipix has already made his way to T ramp and supports them with this flashbang. Once the flashbang pops, they can exit connector and focus their attention to first the toilet entry, before looking at the fading smoke in divider. As we can see from Zipix's point of view, the position for the lineup is very close to the short Molotov position, which makes it a nice combination to both deny map control at B short, while also supporting his team at middle. For this smoke, just come over to the place where the shadow has a small corner, then aim up at the sky. I personally like to use the left side of this warning sign as a reference while aiming up to the height of this building's corner. Release with a jump throw and a smoke will land in divider after a short bounce against this narrow wall. Practice this one a few times on an offline 128 tick server to make sure that you'll hit it consistently since it needs to be quite precise. At some occasions, Astralis will do an A execute and that's where the next smoke comes into play. During these executes, Zipix is responsible for throwing the dumpster smoke, that makes it more difficult for CTs to rotate and enter the bomb site. I personally think this is a very strong smoke, especially to cut off or at least delay the rotations from the retaking CTs. Be careful however, because if this is the only smoke that you're using during an execute, then there might still be a defender behind the truck who could cause some trouble. Use the lamp and the wall to get yourself in the correct position while standing on top of the bench. Then aim above the outer ring and nearly at the top of this lamp. Left click throw and the smoke lands in the middle of the dumpster gap. That has brought us to the last 3 nades of the video and for these I want to show a few examples of Zipix utility usage on the CT side. His most frequently used nade as a defender is definitely this next smoke. After the spawn timer has run down and the round has started, Zipix instantly comes over to this dumpster at the back of side and throws a smoke that lands at the entrance of the monster tunnel. Analyzing the last 10 official matches that the Stralis played on overpass showed that Zipix's tendency is to use this particular smoke in approximately half of the rounds that he plays on the CT side. Therefore, we can already tell that he greatly values the map control gained from throwing this smoke in the beginning of the round. This includes stopping or disturbing any potential monster rushes and giving him the opportunity to get into the other side of monster without being spotted. For the lineup, come over to the dumpster on site, then crouch down in the corner and aim up at the end of this pole. Jump throw while crouched and the smoke will fly, bounce against the bridge and land inside the entrance of the monster tunnel. 
One way to make sure that nobody pushed through the smoke and got in front of it early on is by peeking into the tunnel. That's where you'll see Zipix use his next easy flashbang for. He throws his flashbang by the time he gets into the water at B and the flash will pop in front of the monster tunnel and blind anyone that is pushed up aggressively in front of the smoke. This way he has taken control of monster in a safe way and prevents getting caught off guard by any quick pushes from the attackers. This flashbang doesn't need a specific lineup, it can be thrown with a left click throw while running backwards, or a right click throw while running forwards, or something in between. Just make sure it lands deep enough to blind the players in the tunnel. And since it's thrown on the left side, it can even facilitate one of the teammates who are playing from behind the barrels, without them getting blinded. For the last nade of the video, we see a fancy smoke lineup that he deploys once again in the beginning of the round, to establish early map control as a CT. This time, the smoke is used to block off the stairs at T-Ramp. At the same time, his two A defenders, Dupree and Device, use their molotovs to barrage the path behind the smoke, making it an almost impossible task for attackers to get into the playground area. This premeditated strategy by Astralis allows Dupree to get some crucial control of the playground area without taking too many risks. The lineup for this powerful smoke is surprisingly easy. When spawning in CT, come over to the default box at the left side. Then aim up at this corner in the wall and release with a jump throw after a short run forward. The smoke will bounce against the wall and pop on the stairs, not leaving any gaps to see through. This in combination with some well placed molotovs should give you an easier time taking control of either the fountain or playground area. And that's it for this video, we've now seen 12 of Zipix's most used nades on overpass. I hope learning these nades can help you build a stronger routine for your gameplay and get you more consistent wins the next time you join the server. Good luck with practicing and thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.